I'm joined by two guests who have memorably locked horns on Uncensored before, the author of Rabbi Shmuley and the Young Turks host and creator Jake Hugo. Two friends of a show, and I hope we can keep this, uh, at the very least, respectful. Are you prepared to watch the IDF kill in Rafa to avenge what happened on October the 7th? You're a rabbi. Rabbi. Hamas are Nazis with GoPros. Young Turks is essentially the Hitler Youth. I don't like Hamas. I don't want Hamas to win. Oh, Hamas made us murder your children, made us murder your women. No, they didn't. You did that. Anti-Semite. You don't know any history whatsoever. Cenk doesn't know basic facts. Candace Owens' critique of Israel is perfectly legitimate. She says that the first lady of France has male genitalia and testicles and says as a man, she said that she would stake her whole reputation on that last week. Listen, stop your ad hominems. I want to ask one question, Pierce. Rabbi, let him speak. I have one question. Pierce, hey, he why won't he shut the up. This is a catastrophe. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I'm never coming on with him again. Come on, Shank. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has again defied international criticism, warning an IDF offensive in Rafah is inevitable and will last for several weeks. Israel says that not invading the city of 1.5 million people, many of whom, of course, are refugees from elsewhere in Gaza, means admitting defeat to Hamas. Critics, including many of Israel's allies, fear it means many thousands more innocent lives will now be lost. To debate this, I'm joined by two guests who have memorably locked horns on Uncensored before. One of them has been on the sharp end of significant criticism lately, including from me. More on that later. But I'm joined now by the author of The Israel Warrior and Kosher Sex, Rabbi Shmuley, and The Young Turks host and creator, Cenk Ugar. Well, welcome to both of you. Uh, Cenk, let me ask you first of all, a lot of heat coming from America towards Benjamin Netanyahu, with Chuck Schumer basically implying that he should be replaced as leader in a new election as soon as possible. What do you make of that? Yeah, it's unprecedented. I, I think people need to understand what a giant deal this is. Uh, the leadership of uh, either party, Democrats or Republicans, have never, ever broken with Israel. Chuck Schumer is one of the biggest supporters of Israel in the whole country. For him to come out and say, enough is enough, uh, you've got to turn around, you've got to call new elections, and Netanyahu is... Uh, damaging Israel uh, is an enormous moment in American-Israeli relations. And he's not alone. Thomas Friedman, uh, also an enormous Israeli supporter, uh, wrote an ar article in the New York Times saying that Israel is now radioactive. And so these are not enemies of Israel. And the same goes for me. Allies of Israel saying, please, turn around, because this is not good for, like, Look, I care deeply about the Palestinians. I'm not sure the Schumers of the world or the Bidens of the world have ever shown that. But all of us care about Israel as well. And this is catastrophic for Israel's reputation. And you do not want Israel to be alone in the world again. 21,000 women and children have been slaughtered at a minimum. Now 1.1 million Palestinians are starving as we speak now. You must turn around Otherwise, this is horrific, not just for those starving, innocent human beings, but also for Israel itself. Rabbi Shmuley, I mean, you've been obviously extremely passionate in your support of what Israel's been doing in response to that terror attack on October the 7th. But attacking Rafah, which is a refugee camp right now, with 1.5 million people, the vast majority of whom are completely innocent people, many, many, many hundreds of thousands of women and children. This is going to be a catastrophe if Netanyahu goes ahead with attacking Rafa, isn't it? The catastrophe for the Palestinian people is Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. If Israel does not destroy the last two military battalions who are encamped in Rafa, who, without whom there cannot be more terror attacks, will have peace in the Middle East. It's a catastrophe for the Palestinians, whose food was stolen for 18 years before this war by the leadership, Ismail Aniyah, who's worth $7 billion. Where was the outrage of Cenk Igor back then? How is it that these guys are flying around in private jets while the, the Palestinians were suffering for 18 years with no hope? This is not about caring about the Palestinians. It's about pure anti-Semitism. Let's look at March 14th, 
2024, a date that will live in infamy in the annals of the United States Senate, where a Senate majority leader called for regime change of the only democracy in the Middle East. By the way, I want to congratulate you know, uh, Vladimir Putin, a real, real nail biter yesterday where he only won by 90% of the vote. Schumer did not call for regime change in Russia. He didn't call for regime change. Bashar al-Assad, Israel's next door neighbor who killed 600 thousand Arabs. He didn't call for regime change in Turkey. Uh, uh, you know, my friend Cenk was born uh, in, in, in Turkey, where, where you have the Turkish tyrant Erdogan who slaughters and imprisons journalists. He didn't call for regime change in so Qatar. So what does that tell you? The what does that tell you? OK, but so, Rabbi Shuri, so, what does that tell you about the strength of feeling in America amongst senior politicians about what its great ally Israel is currently doing? The, their initial full-scale support. It, tell, it tells me that pres it, it, you're, you're, it's, a, it's a fair question, uh, uh, Pierce. And by the way, thank you for having me on again. Mm. It tells me that President Biden, who's a good man, but he's 81 years old, has allowed one city in the United States, Dearborn, Michigan. Michigan is the is the critical s swing state where you have a congresswoman named Rashida Tlaib who is a dyed-in-the-wool anti-Semite, not anti-Israel, anti a Jew hater. He has allowed one city to dictate the presidential election. This is all about presidential politics. And, uh, and Chuck Schumer allowed himself to be Joe Biden's court Jew. They needed a Jew to get on the Senate floor and say that the people of Israel will no longer be a democracy. You know, to my friend Schenck, the last time we were on, I said to him, you, you know, you, you, you withdrew your presidential campaign. I'm sorry that you were outpolled by even, you know, SpongeBob square pants. But you went back from your presidential campaign. You, if you want, you could run as the chief information officer for Hamas because you parrot their lies about Israel's being genocidal. But I will tell you one thing. How is it, how is it that people do not care one bit that the leadership of Hamas have stolen the future of the Palestinian people for 18 years? And only when well, Hamas think, is oh, destroyed on, on. and removed... All right, Rabbi Shirley. I think, look, a lot of people will share your concern about what Hamas has done in those 18 years. They will also think that Netanyahu has basically admitted that he was perfectly happy with Hamas running Gaza because it separated the Palestinians uh, from Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. But you haven't, in all that rant you've just unleashed about this, you haven't actually answered my question. And I will make it, you know... Personal to you, you're a rabbi. When you see a refugee camp, that is what it is. Rabbi. When you see a refugee camp with one and a half million people, they've all been sent there and displaced there by Israel, by the bombardment in the north. When you see this and you see Netanyahu saying, we're going to go in for several weeks, surely you don't think this is a good idea for Israel that you're going to see the wholesale slaughter of innocent women and children? You know, uh, it's a fair question. Again, uh, Pierce, let me be clear. War is horrible. War is terrible. Israel has said that they will move those 1.5 million civilians, but war is always terrible. It has Netanyahu made mistakes, especially when he allowed... Qatar to continue to give Hamas a billion dollars a year. Yes, he did make those mistakes. I'm personally friendly with Netanyahu. I was critical of that decision at the time. I remain really? so. But let's be clear. Without 700,000 Americans dying in the Civil War, which is atrocious, we might have had slavery, God forbid. If we didn't destroy Nazi Germany, there was starvation in Berlin. Innocent, beautiful German children. They weren't Nazis. Those who were conscripted into the, into the Hitler Youth. And by the way, Young Turks is essentially the Hitler Youth. I don't know why Cenk uses that name still. He's going back. They were the ones who perpetrated the Armenian genocide. I, These German children were not responsible. Loser. Wait, wait, Japanese children were All not right. responsible. If Japanese gonna, children listen. were not responsible. But without destroying right. Hamas, there will be war for the next okay. hundred years. I, and let me just say that you've gone once again very ad hominem with the other guest when he hadn't on you. I'm not, I'm not, so, okay, I'm not going ad hominem. You, you cannot are. use a genocidal name for you your are. podcast. Let me go to Jake. I'm sorry. Jake, your response. Yeah. Yeah, look, Piers, I wasn't supposed to come on with this guy. I was supposed to come on with a different guest. I'm never coming on with him again. He, he's All he has is ad hominem. So you ask him about 21 to 25,000 women. Are you really that afraid of me that every speak, time please, you, debate, really. you say you're not going to come speak. on? Let him speak, please. Come on, come on, Cenk. Let him speak. Cenk, you ran for president. Let him speak, you won't even please, debate Rabbi people. Shmuley. Come on, you can't run. Rabbi, let him speak, Cenk. 
Okay, Rabbi Shmuley says he wants to murder more women and children and then calls us genocidal because we're trying to protect women and children both in Israel and in Palestine? You see me sticking up for Israel when Hamas attacks. You see me criticizing Hamas, saying they're terrible, I don't agree with them. You see me uh, trying to protect innocent lives on both sides. Then this guy comes on. He says, kill more Palestinians. We killed, what, 700,000, he said, in another war. So are you going to go to 700,000 in Gaza? The Rabbi Shmuley. The civil war, Shmuley. for God's sake. I okay. wish you knew a little okay. bit of American history. Rabbi you know any American history. who says murder, Read murder, Wikipedia murder, 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 murder. Sake. That's all this rabbi. See, this hey, okay, Genocidal. I've got to say one Jews more thing. Jews are murderers. Jews no, are killers. No, shut up. Pier Pierce, 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 can I, Pierce, can I ask this man one question. The man no, ran for president. No, you can't ask anything. Uh, All you ever do is lie. Shut up and everything. Listen, stop your ad hominems. I want to ask one question, Pierce, of, of my Jehovah. ad hominems. If you care about the Shh, Palestinians, I, I have one question. I have one question. Why don't you call, Chank, for the unconditional surrender of Hamas today, the release of the hostages, and the war will be over? I am challenging you now to call for the yeah, unconditional surrender of Hamas. And I'm Will not going to answer so any of your or not? stupid Will you questions. Will you do so or not? No, I'm, listen, I'm not entertaining this Pierce, fool of a man. Pierce, why won't he answer the question? Okay, Pierce, hey, why he won't, won't he answer shut the up. No, there's no talking to this guy. Let me, Pierce, Cheng, Cheng, no let me, let me ask Cheng. I want to play you a clip, Cheng, of Netanyahu at the weekend. This is what he said. Okay, can I just, before you do, Pierce... Yeah. Look, I hope that everybody in the audience understands that this guy isn't helping Israel at all. He's putting a very, very ugly face to Israel. And I hope that you don't make the mistake out in the audience of thinking that everyone in well, Israel... Well, I'm going to come... Oh, I'm God gonna... forbid. Hold on. Let me yeah. finish. Yeah. Or that anyone else that, that is Jewish thinks anything like your Rabbi Shmuley does. My Jewish friends are horrified, oh, Chank, Chank, horrified Chank, Chank, by the Chank, death Give me a favor, Chank. Chank rabbi Chank, doesn't care. The, the rabbi doesn't care killers. at all. He's Come the most on, immoral don't, man don't, I have ever met right, in my life. You, cannot, you right. cannot be... Okay, wait a second, go ahead, wait a second. Ask, I, no, asked him a simple, Pierce, I asked a simple question. Let Piers ask the question. I would like to play what Netanyahu said and ask Chank for his reaction. Here we are from Fox News. When people tell us don't go into Rafa, that's like telling the Allies, uh, listen, don't go into Berlin, leave, leave a quarter of the Nazi army intact. You know, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, if we leave a quarter of the uh, Hamas uh, uh, fighting uh, uh, terrorist uh, battalions in place, they'll regroup, reconquer Gaza, and, uh, in fact, perpetrate once again what they vow to do, which is to repeat the October 7th massacre over and over and over again. Cenk, your reaction to that? Yeah, so this guy has been justifying uh, the slaughter of Palestinians from day one. You have to understand something. In order for Israel to get peace, which should be the goal of its leaders and its citizens, and, and it is certainly of its citizens, but I don't know, definitely not its leaders at this point in time, you have to get the peace as you did with Egypt. With Egypt, there are no more bombs. You've had peace for over 40 years. And, they, and all of the doubters and all the right-wingers and all the warmongers told you, oh, Egypt will never listen. Egypt will keep trying to kill you. Egypt's going to try to kill all the Jews. But they didn't. The warmongers were lying to you, just like they're lying to you today. And why are they doing that? They're doing it because they want to remain in power. Netanyahu knows the minute that this war... And by the way, it's not just Netanyahu. It's also the leaders of Hamas. They should have taken a truce, a ceasefire earlier. They held it up on absurd grounds of not releasing the names of the hostages. So the leaders on both sides profit from this war. But the citizens of Israel are, are the only people who can change it. The way you get to peace is doing a peace deal. This endless war and the endless occupation is going to prevent you from having the safe haven for Jews that you have desired and deserved all of these years. For God's sake, turn around, not just for the Palestinians, but for the Israelis, so you could finally get the peace. If you do not free the Palestinians... Look, I know there's PTSD from the Holocaust. Pierce, Pierce, Pierce and right I, must, now, I must be Israel's allowed to respond. Yeah, you can respond in a moment, rage. Yeah. Israel is okay, acting in a blind Pierce, Pierce, rage Pierce. at this point. But the Palestinians are not Pierce, Nazis. Pierce, Pierce. They're the Jews. They're the same as the Jews. Pierce, Pierce. Victimized. Horribly victimized. Pierce, Pierce. Wake okay. up, Pierce, Israel. I, I respond, Wake up. Please. Don't do the same thing that I'm, was I'm, done I'm, to I'm, you. I'm, Pierce, Pierce, I, I, I must respond. I must respond. These, these emotional tirades of Cenk Igor, who sadly, and I'm not saying this to be at hominem, 
when we were last on, I begged him, just read a Wikipedia well, His page. name is Cenk Ugar, the for starters. Camp David, the Camp David Accords of 1979, which led to the peace with Egypt, was all predicated on a catastrophic military defeat by the Egyptians launched by Anwar Sadat on the 6th of October, 1973, Yom Kippur War, where Sadat thought he'd be victorious, and in the end, his third army was completely encircled. They were going to be destroyed, and then Sadat came to the conclusion definitively that the only way to proceed is through peace because militarism was destroyed. That's what led to peace. The same was true of World War II with Nazism. The same was true with Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Terrible, terrible events that with Japanese imperialism. There will be no peace until Hamas is destroyed militarily and my Palestinian brothers and sisters, who are not genocidal, but Hamas is, Hamas are, 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 are uh, Nazis with GoPros. When Militarism is destroyed completely. Then the Palestinians. How many will people? Come how many? With a all right. Real peace offer, knowing right. knowing that arms do not work. Okay, but one but question. Cenk Iger, who no, Cenk one Iger question. just said she never Look, heard of his a name civil is Cenk war. Ugar, civil for starters. War. All right, so get his name right. My point to you, Rabbi Shmuley, is this: How many more? I apologize, by the way, I apologize for that. I'm sorry. Trey. How many more innocent people are you prepared to watch the IDF kill in Rafa in the next few weeks? to avenge what happened on October the 7th, because it is going to be... Not one, not, but, not one, not one, not one. I, I don't want one innocent... But there are going to be thousands child, more killed. As much killed. as a Jewish child. But they, they will... If, if Hamas continues in power, the Palestinians will continue to be brutalized. Uh, LGBTQ Palestinians will be castrated. Young Palestinian teenagers will be murdered by their brothers or their cousins for just having a boyfriend at 16. They will die at Hamas's hand for the next hundred years if Israel does well, why not Why would you expect... Okay, just let me like ask Assad, you, just let me like ask Assad you, killed 600,000 Arabs. Why would you expect people in Gaza after all this not to want to exact bloody revenge for what is going on in their country? Because the IDF is oh, so far... We, we are, you, you have we, spent months and months and months flatlining <clears throat> Gaza and you're now about to attack a refugee camp with a million and a half people in it. Why would you think that doing that is not actually going to present to Israel going forward a worse security threat? Because most independent because analysts the, because think it my, is. Because, because my Palestinian brothers and sisters are as human as I, and they have the same ambitions for their children, for their future. They know that Hamas was elected to a four-year term. They're in their 19th year term. They were supposed to share power with the Palestinian Authority. They took the Palestinian Authority officials, threw them off of rooftops and murdered them, and then took $150 billion in international aid and bought private jets for their leaders. They understand that ultimately, that's why when, even when you see the worst news outlets interviewing Palestinians, they say they're suffering, and they are because of Hamas. But notice they almost never criticize Israel because they know Hamas brought this war upon them. And I challenge Cenk one more time if he wants to respond, since he says he'll never debate me again, and I wouldn't if he was either, because he doesn't know basic information. Cenk, why do you not call right now for Hamas to surrender unconditionally? They provoked this war October 7th and released the All hostages. All right, well, let me... Okay. Will you call for that now I or think, not? I think, you know what, it's a legitimate question. Cenk, your response to that question. Okay, yeah, but let's just be clear. I'm never going to go on with him again, not because... He is a good debater. It's because he's a horrible debater. It's like talking to an ad hominem machine, just one insult after another, not attached to any reality or facts. Okay, now to on Hamas. Guys, how many times do I have to say, I don't like Hamas. I don't want Hamas to win. I don't want Hamas to be in power. I want him to surrender. I want him to give all the hostages. That's so easy. Well, that's a clear answer. Your, hold, hold on. That's a yeah. super clear answer. And do you know what created Hamas? The occupation. Because when you oppress people and you put them in an open-air prison and you take away all their rights and you make them subjugated to another set of people, they, then radicalism and extremism rises up. What did you think was going to rise up? Gandhi, did you think that moderates were going to rise up when you put five million people in an open-air prison, bomb them whenever you like, and starve them whenever you like? Of course they're going to oh go to extremists God. who say revenge. Uh, who, and then Pierce, this constant Hamas excuse was that, democratically oh, elected you in just 2006. Let me answer a Chen question. doesn't know basic facts. They were democratically elected when Israel I, left Pierce, I, Gaza. What am I going to do The problem with Cenk is Cenk read what am I gonna do with this guy? Rabbi Shmuley, the next let, time you debate me. Rabbi Shmuley, let Cenk finish the point he was making, then you can respond. Yeah, look, uh, so 
this constant excuse that the Israeli right wing has of Hamas made me do it. Oh, if it wasn't for Hamas, I wouldn't have to kill Palestinian children. Over 11,500, no, I'm sorry, over 12,000 children now killed by Israel, by Israel, not Hamas. Uh, over t 21 to 25,000 women and children killed by Israel, not Hamas. And then they go, well, Hamas made us murder your children, made us murder your women. No, they didn't. You did that. You chose to do that. IDF has now killed 25 to 30 times the number of innocent people that Hamas did. So if you think that's terrorism, what Hamas did, and I do, and I've said it now clearly 200 times, then what Israel and IDF has done is 25 times the terrorism that Hamas has done. And that's a stone cold fact. Go ahead and make any excuses, any ad hominems you like, because every time you talk, Rabbi Shmuley, you make Israel look worse, not better. Go ahead. Rabbi Shmuley, I would say you, that on Pierce, that, may I respond? Uh, well, Pierce, may I respond? Yes, you can. I'm going to make one point, which is... OK, thank you. Uh, when you, yeah, when yes, you yes, appeared last time, we did get a lot of people on the Israeli side, Jewish people, who said you don't reflect their opinions about this. I mean, are you aware that you're a polarizing figure amongst your own community? Oh, I, I love the fact that we Jews are a democratic society, democratic community, and democratic Israel. I love it. I love when I get criticism. I learn more from my critics than I do from the people that like me. It's people like Cenk You're who welcome. support people like, like Erd Erdogan in Turkey, who's a tyrant, who, who squashes all dissent, and there isn't one Arab democracy. I invite criticism. Uh, Pierce, let's just be clear. My problem with Cenk is not personal. Cenk, if, if, if I said anything personal, please overlook my shortcomings. I will tell you something. My problem with you, Cenk, is that, respectfully, you don't know any history whatsoever. You didn't hear the Civil War. I've never debated an American who didn't know what the Civil War, that, that war of 700... Of course I know what the Civil War, war is. But, That's but, but, wait, Chank, wait, wait, wait a moment, wait a moment, wait a moment. It's my turn, it's my, my he turn. He called Senator Schumer anti says, earlier, by the way. Let's note that. When Cenk says, when Cenk, excuse me, when Cenk says that the reason Hamas came to power was because of the occupation, the rank ignorance, Israel withdrew in 2005. There was a United States-sponsored election in 2006 in Gaza that was open and free. The Palestinian Authority, run by Mahmoud Abbas and Yasser Arafat, had just left the scene. They ran against Hamas. Hamas there was a power-sharing agreement, and Hamas murdered their fellow Palestinians and threw them off of roofs. They came to power through a democratic election that the United States insisted upon. There is no open-air concentration camp. And, and what you just said, that Israel killed 12,000 children and they killed them all, Hamas uses them as human shields. They are their bulletproof vest. This is a <laughs> blood libel. This is rank anti-Semitism that we have suffered for 2,000 years. And, Shank, if you're too afraid to debate me, next time say no or at least read a Wikipedia page, for God's sake. Shank, what I would say, okay. just on that point about uh, human shields... The Israeli military said today it's taking control of the Al Shifa hospital in Gaza City. Uh, troops came under fire from hospital buildings, 80 people detained, others killed, including a Hamas terrorist. Um, there seems little doubt that Hamas has used places like hospitals as a kind of collective human shield, does it? No. OK, that's absurd. So let me explain why. So, again, this guy, he claims he knows history, he has a perverted, only one-side version of history. He, earlier, he called Senator Schumer anti-Semitic. That's the most outrageous, <laughs> absurd thing I've ever heard from the most senior I Jewish leader in America. I never said any such thing. That's invention. Okay. I you never did. You said any such You could re-roll the tape. Okay. Don't invent. Okay. Don't invent. Okay. Yeah, I said yeah, that I he know, was serving as Biden's his court his Jew. Defense, I never said he was an anti-Semite. And, and Don't put words defense, in my mouth. Shmuley's defense of every out atrocity and war crime of Israel is... Anti-Semite. And, and you ruined it, Shmuley, because there are real an anti-Semites out there, especially now, including Candace Owens, who attacked you unfairly, and I actually defended you, okay? But when you use it to justify the war crimes of a government, of a government, you do more damage than you help. So please stop, okay? And that's why your own community is telling you, please stop. The, so you pretend like I'm some giant fan of the Turkish government or other governments, etc. But I, as a Turk, it's Are so you? easy for me do to you criticize support the Erdogan? Turkish government. Do you support Erdogan? Because it has nothing to do with being Turkish. Turkish dem dem so, okay, Will you condemn what again? Erdogan he has done to the country of your birth? He won't ever stop interfering. So let me answer Piers' question. So it, Piers, they're attacking a hospital now. And I read it this morning. They've got snipers killing anyone that crosses a window. 
Well, how do you know if they're patients, doctors, hostages, or Hamas, even if you think Hamas is in the hospital? Which, by the way, the IDF has never proven that in any other hospital raid that they have done. They, every one of their pieces of propaganda has turned out to be a lie, disproven every single Did time. Did you just say hospital even rape? If, hold on, Did you just say rape? Finish? Pierce, I gotta go. Did this you say that Jews rape? Sentence. Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move to what you just alluded to, uh, Cenk, which is this issue with Candace Owens. Because as you just said, uh, and, and to my surprise, you've actually supported the rabbi about this. Uh, I wanna play a clip, this is Candace Owens who has accused you, Rabbi Shmuley, of being unholy, partly because of the kosher sex empire that you uh, are part of. Let's take a look. There is just a very small ring of specific people who are using uh, the fact that they are Jewish to shield themselves from any criticism. It's food for thought, right? And I think, again, there have been enough people that are speaking out about a ring in Hollywood, also a ring potentially in DC, that we should start to ask those questions all of us, black, Spanish, Jewish, Chinese, Japanese, all Americans should want answers because this appears to be something that is quite sinister. So that was what she said generally about Hollywood being run by a Jewish gang. But then she said this specifically about you. What are you gonna do next? You're gonna kill me? Are you gonna, are you gonna kill me? because I refuse to kowtow to you, because I'm not fearful of you, and I think it's weird that you and your daughter are promoting and selling sex toys. That's why I deem you an unholy rabbi, because the industrialization of sex is harmful to our society everywhere. I don't care if you call it kosher sex. You're selling butt plugs on the internet. You gross me out, you disgust me. I am a better person than you, and I do not fear you. Because as I said, you don't have the ability or the strength to fracture the relationships between me and the Jewish community. Rabbi Shmini, your response to that? First of all, uh, saying that I would fracture Candace Owens, who is the queen of American anti-Semites' relation with the Jewish community, she is being condemned well, she, she by She emphatically every denies quarter. being anti-Semitic. The most the well, 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 one second. She can deny that. Let's just go through it. She defended Kanye West's love of Hitler repeatedly. She says that Israel is guilty of a genocide, just like Cenk Igor. You know, by the way, Cenk, you and I should have a beer sometime. Maybe you'll understand why Get Jews are so Get his name right. His name is Cenk Uger. I told this, you three times now. I'm sorry, Chank Uger. I, I, again, I apologize. We should have a beer sometime. Because we Jews, we Jews are tired of the lies that we're murderers. I'm killing Candace Owens. And by the way, I've noticed something very interesting, not with Chank, but with Mohammed Ijab, who I, who I debated on your show and now with Candace Owens. They have an obsession with Jewish sex. It's a perverted obsession. First of all, she says that the first lady of, of France has, has male genitalia and testicles and says as a man, she said that she would stake her whole reputation on that last week. But it's the Jews... I'm a child of divorce. The big problem of marriage today is not novelty items that might bring passion back to a monogamous relationship so it's no longer monotonous. The big problem with marriage is adultery. It's husbands who are addicted to porn. It's people like Candace Owens who sex shame people who want to have an erotic, passionate marriage. And the fact that, that Candace Owens is calling Jews in Hollywood murderers who are running a sex ring, which she said, in order to blackmail black artists and get them having sex with children so that they can blackmail them and shake them down with pedophilia. Listen, she's having a psychotic breakdown in public and it's tragic. But why does her psychotic breakdown have to come out in the form of a blood libel against Jews, that Jews are murderers? Why doesn't she hate Mennonites? Why doesn't she hate Mormons? All right. Why doesn't well, let she me hate ask, Buddhists? Or, and, uh, let me ask, look, given the chunk, you, you raised Candace Owens before I did. What is your view of this? Yeah, this is actually a very important topic because unlike Candace Owens and Rabbi Shmuley, I make a giant, and I hope everybody does, make a giant distinction between the right-wing government of Israel and Jews across the world. Those are two very, very different things. So if you criticize Israel, Shmuley will say you're anti-Semitic. And if you say, hey, they have killed over 12,000 children, which is just a fact, it's a literal fact that the whole world agrees on, he will say it's blood libel. But no, but that's it's the government. We have it's to be able to criticize the government. Name one source. Hold on. Can name I, I'm one about source. To that's name finish, one source please. that isn't Hamas. It's not a fact. He's actually about it's to defend you, I think. You can't so just blood libel the Jews. Cenk speak. There is not one source that says that except for Hamas. Let him speak. Just, no, he said the whole world. I want to know one source. Is it the New York speak. Times? Is it Newsweek? Is it Time? 
Who said the Jews killed 12,000 Jews, uh, children in Hamas, in, in, uh, in Gaza? Name one source. Literally every news organization. Literally every name news one. organization name one. Since in it's the every, world. Name one. New York name Times, one. CNN, human rights groups, World uh, United Nations, every that single organization says- That is a complete says, lie. The New York Times said they are quoting okay, Hamas right. figures. You are lying yeah, to yeah, your yeah, teeth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they never yeah, said yeah, it. Quote yeah, the yeah. date. No, no, Quote the okay, date. I know. He said uh, every news source you can name one. Actually, for the, record, for the record, multiple- multiple respectable news agencies around the world and news organizations have all said that the number of children killed in Gaza is at least as many as 10,000, probably 12,000, it Co may be co more. Quoting Hamas figures or quoting independently verified? Yeah. Quoting the Hamas-run uh, Palestinian uh, Hamas health yes, authority. Okay, so quoting Hamas. So yeah, at least yeah. say that. Okay. Fair but enough. They are Hamas accepted, they are the accepted killed... by okay. independent organizations. Anyway, Cenk, you were about to say no, something about the Candice. Nobody accepts Hamas figures. I would like to ask Cenk about the Candice Owens figures. thing. Cenk. Okay, so, so Candice Owens' critique of Israel is perfectly legitimate, although I hate to say that about anything Candice Owens says. But when she turns to the other topic and she starts talking about a ring of Jews inside America that control the media or politics, that is as anti-Semitic as it gets. That is anti-Semitic trope 101, right? There's no excuse for it. It's not remotely true. And by the way, you have to be a moron to believe things like that. And on the so, specific I mean, point, Cenk, about the, uh, her saying that Rabbi Shmuley is unholy because of the kosher sex empire, what do you think of that? Oh, oh, I couldn't care less about that. I don't care if he's holy or unholy or what he does with his sex toys. I don't care at all. That is not at all germane <laughs> to the topic. What is germane, what is germane is do not attack Jews because of the government's actions in right. Israel. Do not make assumptions about them. That is insanity and it is totally wrong. Okay. At the same time, you don't get to hide behind, well, Israel's a Jewish state, so we can kill anyone we like. No, that is terrible for the Jews. Don't do that. Ch and Ch don't okay. do that. Do think that we Jews want to, want to be... kill anyone we want? Okay, I want to be joined now. Kill... Ch we're Ch actually going to hang on. Ch Rabbi we're going to be more reasonable here. Rabbi Shuri, you're going to like this because we're going to be joined by another member of your family, <laughs> your daughter, Chana. Who runs Kosher Sex anyway, in Jerusalem? Anyway, but thank you for saying that. Can, can I just thank? Can I just thank Chank for saying that? Thank you for saying that. Shane. Yeah, he was being supportive. But, but we just don't want to kill everybody, by the way. But we're okay. being joined now by Chana, who is your daughter. Chana, um, thank God we've got you Hi, to everyone. calm things down here. Uh, you you <laughs> yeah, run the co Kosher sex, sex in. Yeah, you run Kosher Sex in Jerusalem. The allegation from Candice Owens is that your father is unholy for being associated with this business. Your response. My response is, first of all, she, Candace Owens, I don't take anything she says seriously. She'll say anything for attention. She knows nothing about Judaism and she knows nothing about sex, clearly. In Judaism, sex is the holiest act that two people can engage in, especially within the confines of marriage. And that's what we set out to do with Kosher Sex. This was a book that my dad wrote 25 years ago and he wrote it to enhance marriage and to make it exciting and to use Jewish wisdom to keep couples connected. And I took those ideas 25 years later because sex had only taken more of a hit. Like my dad said, endless porn addiction, infidelity. People have lost the ability to connect. And the, I mean, the worst part is, in my opinion, is the rates of loneliness. I think that people are desperately, very tragically lonely these days. And to be shamed for wanting to connect with your spouse when you're married for 20 years and want to keep it hot and want to keep it sexy. Achana, Judaism is all about that. And what are your big, biggest Very selling? Holy. What are your biggest selling product lines? Can I oh, now? well, getting into the biggest, the biggest selling product. Well, Candace actually, I mean, it's funny. She, she, she supports and defends Andrew Tate, who is a, who just got arrested again for sex trafficking. But she called these oils that I just came out with these beautiful arousal lubricants that are made in Israel in the Holy Land that are specifically meant to be used between couples to enhance the sexual experience, to make it more exciting, to make sex more pleasurable, last longer. And she called me, my dad, and these products filth. One word to millions of people, filth. So, well, I forgot the question. What did you want? Well, no, you answered the question. That's obviously one of your biggest selling lines. Okay. But... But, but Rabbi Shmuley... Just making I mean, sure you, I'm asking the question. I don't want to get... Yeah. Rabbi Shmuley, just finally, I mean, do, you, do you think there is something unholy about this or is sex the ultimate example of good holiness? 
I think that sex is the ultimate form of validation because it makes you feel desirable. It makes you feel that even when you don't have the accoutrements of Gucci or fancy clothing, that your very body, your essence is desirable. And the greatest, uh, the, the tragedy of marriage is today is the loss of erotic desire. It's where husbands and wives become best friends and they're no longer lovers. The average American marriage uh, has sex seven minutes a week, I kid you not, which includes the time the husband spends begging. Seven minutes of sex is not going to be enough for you to feel that you are more than the mother of children, but you're actually still a woman. But notice that medieval Christianity really thought that sex was only procreative and that sex is only to have babies. And she's always talking about, about that. But anyone who actually wants to feel that sex is uh, fulfilling, that your erotic needs are catered to by okay. your wife, by your husband, so you don't have to go to, the, to, a, to, to Pornhub or anything like that. We are weaning people off of that and we're okay. saving right. marriages. Final and by question the way, I want to say this. one final thing to all the all right, I just want to ask you, how yeah. much money do you make from this? Well, you know, we, we, we not enough. The, the, the kosher sex book sold well, very well. you, want, you know, obviously, you but run I, it. But, so. I, but China, how much money do you make? No, no, so listen, my this is Hannah, actually Hannah, this Hannah. is my company. Yeah. Hannah, 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 how much do we make on kosher sex? I got nine kids, so I got to. <laughs> Rabbi Shmuley, you could you could interrupt Shake and me. You can't interrupt your own daughter. To help people. Okay, I apologize. China, how much money do you make? Can I leave? Yeah. You want me to tell you how much money I make? Yes, from the sex stuff. <laughs> I mean, I make a living, thank God. Well, millions, or what we'll we'll talking here? God no, willing, no, no we, we're we, not in the millions I, yet. I, 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 no, we're I not in the millions say, yet, God willing. No, no, I can say clearly, I can say clearly, I don't make anything from it, zero, nothing. Okay. And Hannah's let Hannah me go, is let me building go to the Cheng, company. Finally, finally, Cheng. It, it needs to grow, and this is great exposure, thank okay, you. Okay, Cheng, we, we've talked a lot of, of uh, controversial stuff and had a vigorous debate, as always, but can we end on a point of agreement here? Do you see anything in the, in the kosher sex business that uh, aligns to your world values? I, I couldn't care less. Uh, I, I'm just mainly looking forward to leaving now. Uh, so, no, I, I don't care about this topic at all. I don't care what he does with his dildos. Uh, what do you, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Dildos? We're, where did, where did dildos sex come up? holy and hot. Where, where did holy dildos? Hot. Did someone, did someone say dildos? I don't know. Dildos? I don't care. Like, you see, this is... I don't know what you do. Well, I why don't did care. you bring it up? Wait, Chang, Chang, I just praised you for being one of those rare people who accused <laughs> can, Jews of can genocide. Can I please leave? Who are I don't the Jewish know what sex toys you And you bring sell. up Jewish dildos? <laughs> okay, we are going to release... We are going to... Why are you bringing up dildos? Oh, my God. We are going to release Chang now. Why are Cenk, you bringing thank up you very much you know, indeed. You know, this is, this is the thing. <laughs> no, he wants okay, to be... Well, you know, I got to... Uh, we got to leave can it Can I there. answer my question to Chang? Can I answer the question to Chank? Guys, Cenk? we've got to go. I'm Let's sorry. Let's have a beer sometime. We've run out of time. Let's all okay. have a beer Let's and talk about... Let's have a beer sometime. Uh, Jews holy, are not murderers. Holy sex, Make lubricants and dildos. Why not? Uh, can right. I thank my may, panel? Chank, thank you, as always, very much. Sex. Chana, thank you for joining us from Jerusalem. Rabbi Shmuley, thank you thank very you much too. indeed. <laughs> I appreciate it.